Welcome to this edition of Borderland Treasure, sponsored by Preservation Texas and the County of El Paso. Tonight we are taking you to a neighborhood where African Americans in the community worked, lived, and practiced their faith. Take a look. We were never treated any different. For this pastor, even to this day, it's kind of like we're all just one community down here. The Segundo Barrio, or Second Ward in South El Paso, is a place full of fond memories. My name is Amelia Elmore Robinson. I'm the pastor of Second Baptist Church, one of the oldest black Baptist churches in El Paso. She's led the historic church known by many as the mother church of black churches of the Baptist faith for the past seven years. But she's attended the church. My mother was pregnant with me here at this church. Even before she was born. The Second Baptist Church was established in 1884. They had sent a minister from New York here to start a church for the African American uh, community. But there were African Americans here long before. The city of El Paso was established in 1873, and the four wards, including the Segundo Barrio, were created in 1885. Starting in the early 1880s, many blacks came to work in El Paso in the rail yards or at the local smelter. Others worked as laborers or cooks, and many ran small businesses. Quite a few were Buffalo soldiers and served with distinction in the U.S. Army throughout our region. By 1900, most of the city's 204 African Americans of El Paso lived in this neighborhood. And that brings us back to the Second Baptist Church. My earliest memories of being here was running up and down the steps. Originally established in a small adobe at South Satin Street in 1884, the church now on South Virginia Street cost $25,000 to build. There's no other black church in El Paso that looks like this church. The church was built of bricks in the Gothic style, which developed in medieval France almost 900 years ago. I remember hiding in all the nooks and crannies and going downstairs and hiding from my mother. It has pointed arches, a steeply pitched roof, and bell towers with tall spires. I just, I love the, the atmosphere, I love the way it smells, I love the way it looks. You know, and as a little girl, it was fast, this church fascinated me. My full name is Frances Marie Grandy Hills. Frances Hills, at 96 years old, can still remember spending her days here. My mother took me there in her arms. <laughs> She still attends the church. It's the place, she says, that instilled a strong sense of faith in her. How important was that church to your life? It was very important to me because I, I uh, learned to love the Lord. I learned to pray. I learned about what had happened in the Bible. Hills grew up nearby and like Pastor Elmore smiles when she thinks about her time here as a little well, girl. The neighborhood where I lived as a young person was primarily Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of my friends were Hispanic there in the neighborhood. She's now a retired mathematician but says that her roots run deep in the barrio. I enjoyed playing with the, the kids, and I learned Spanish. One of her favorite things to do was going to the movies, specifically El Colón Theater. Segundo Barrio is home to some of the most notable African-American historic landmarks, like the Orizaba Hotel, built in 1883. It's one of the oldest standing buildings in the Segundo Barrio. It was solely an African-American hotel, and in the 1900s, home to Lieutenant Henry Ocean Flipper, the first black graduate of West Point Academy. Another is Frederick Douglass School. Originally on Staten Street, it was relocated to South Kansas Street in 1891. Its style, an eclectic combination of Romanesque and Victorian, Generations of African-American school children were educated there. Oh, 
Another interesting relic of African American history is found just east of the neighborhood. Fire Station Number、no. Five, designed by Henry C. Trost. The two-story brick structure has three arched openings at ground level and Italian Renaissance features. It's the place where Dr. Lawrence Nixon, a charter member of the El Paso branch of the NAACP, was famously denied the right to vote on July 26, 1924. As a result, he brought three cases to the Supreme Court, helping to set in motion a chain of events that enfranchised African Americans in Texas. Despite the racist Jim Crow laws in Texas at that time, for Pastor Elmore and Hills, life in the Segundo Barrio, from what I remember, we kind of meshed, was generally inclusive. I grew up going to quinceañeras and first holy first communions. I grew up being incorporated into the community. Landmarks like the Second Baptist Church serve as reminders of the proud history of the African Americans of El Paso and the hardships they endured and overcame. Thank you so much for joining us. For more Borderland treasures, visit KTSM.com.